All right, the spicy reward story with candy feedback is titled, Am I the Askinoff for Telling My Mother-in-Law She Doesn't Get to Decide My Wedding Dress? My 23 female and my fiance 25 male are having our wedding in January, and my mother-in-law has been pushing me about the wedding guest list and wants me to change my bridesmaids' dresses. The colors are ocean-themed, and she didn't want them because she didn't like the ocean. But I've been planning since March and don't want my plans ruined. But after that never got resolved, my in-laws came over when I just put our baby, one male, upstairs for a nap. When I came downstairs, I was surprised to see them, but said hello. I was confused as to why my fiancé was so happy, and my fiancé grabbed his mother's phone and showed me the dress. It was a light purple dress that didn't match my theme at all. I told her politely that it didn't match my theme, and I did not need this dress because I already had the perfect dress. She ignored my words and showed me another dress that was light blue, above the knees, and a lace top. Why would she think someone would wear that on their wedding day? Of course, I said no. My mother-in-law screamed at me, calling me an asshole, and said it was her day, too. Uh, sorry, what? (laughs) Mother-in-law, could you say that again so we can record it? I told her that she didn't get to decide my wedding dress because I had already chosen what I wanted to wear. My mother-in-law ran out crying and my fiance and father-in-law, of course, ran after her, leaving me with my baby who she woke up. About two to three hours later, my fiance came back and the first thing he did was scream at me saying that I should just accept the dress my mother-in-law picked out for me because it was his mother's day too. Oh, you dumbass. And told me if it was that big of a deal, he would go to his mother's house and rethink our six-year relationship. He left me bawling my eyes out, and I'm guessing he told my mother because today she messaged me saying that it wasn't a big deal and to suck it up. Your mother joined their side too? What the hell is going on here, OP? My siblings and dad are all on my side, but I still want to know because my fiance's family is threatening me and some of my family are doing the same. So, am I the Askinaut? A little bit of feedback here first. We do have some updates to go through, though. Yeah, her mom, too. What? Wow. Yeah, yeah. We got Brozo. Uh, and, and the question was, am I the astronaut for telling my mother-in-law she doesn't get to decide my wedding dress? Okay. Kenya Thunder, why don't you go ahead and come up? Let's talk about this for a second, and then we'll read the update while you're up here. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the question is, am I the astronaut for telling my mother-in-law she doesn't get to decide my wedding dress? Oh my God! It's Candy Thunder again. On on what freaking planet does on what planet does the mother in law get to decide the wedding dress? Like where has that ever? And on what what planet besides Ascon One is is this okay? How, how is it okay to say it's her day too? And That's, how is it okay for her fiance to say it's her day too? Like <laughs> yeah, and then the the fiance is like. If you don't let this be my mom's day, too, then it's not freaking Mother's Day. It's your wedding day. Then he's going to go rethink our six year relationship. Oh, go think it. Go think about it, because I'll be thinking about it, too. And I'll leave your ass. Go for it. It's unfortunate that they have a one year old, right? Uh, don't. Did, Was it one male or no. one month? I, it said one M. So I, I think don't, that's one. One year old. One year old. Um, the, the whole. This is, I don't, I, it doesn't matter if they have a child together. This is not the guy for you because this is going to be the rest of your life. It's always going to be about his mom. It's his mom too. It's always everything. If you give in on this, everything is going to be. That's true. My mom, my mom wants this. So we'll do this and or un- I'll, or I'll leave you. Unfortunately, him saying him coming back and choosing her side is all you need to know. That's her hand is so far up his ass. She is how she's the puppeteer. How on earth do does your wedding day get turned into mother in law wedding day? Like how? How does that even remotely happen? Okay, but there is an edit. Yeah. So let's, let's dive into that. Okay. Updates. Edit. We broke up. Yes. He said that he's gonna aim for getting full custody. Good luck. Good luck. When I told him I wanted to break up, he went into full grown man tantrum, obviously. <laughs> This made me sick to my stomach. He broke my vases through, okay, through my plants and even threw some plates at me. (laughs) Yeah, good luck with that custody. That's, I'm sure that's going to go real well. It was disgusting. It was disgusting. I'm glad I got this on camera. I also saved the video and hope he has good luck with the custody because he won't be getting it. Oh, snap. (gasps) Mic drop. Good job, She got him on video being stupid and being violent. So, yeah, good luck with that. Also, you caught... You got this before you walk down the aisle with this guy. So, or to this guy, um, you saved yourself. 
this it, this is a blessing in disguise because now you know Oof. that this was not the man for you. And while he may be the father of your child, I I guarantee he won't be that for long. He is not going to stick around. Yeah, he won't. And I I wonder how many times you have sacrificed in order to give this man what he wants to avoid this kind of behavior. You know, and that's the part that that makes me sick. After the split, and after he's not allowed to even be around the child, uh, you know, mother-in-law is going to make a play there too. Um, but whenever they have no access because because he did stupid violent shit, and you've got video proof of it now, um, you know that they're going to spin this and broadcast it that you're you're an evil business yeah, sure. that is just keeping a baby away from them for no reason at all. So just be prepared for that. That's right. going to happen. Yeah, someone said that it doesn't matter. Him throwing plates at her doesn't change anything for custody as long as the kid wasn't hurt. Uh, I, I mean, that Violent shows, behavior, I think, certainly does. Yeah. <clears throat> certainly I mean, I would, does. If that would be something I would take into consideration. Also, the child was in the home. Yeah, and he's a baby. So, I mean, I, I think that it would it would show a violent streak for not getting his way. So I'm not I, I think that that would matter in a custody hearing. Yeah. Especially when he's saying he wants full custody. I do not think that's going to happen. So I OP, I'm so glad that you did not marry this man because this would have been future. And that sucks. All because his mom wanted to pick your wedding dress because it's her day. I mean, you're getting married, but it's her day. Good. Girl. Oh, edit three. Oh, wait. Oh, we missed more. It's on the next page. By my mom, I meant my stepmom, so it could be easier for you guys to understand. Okay. Also, my biological mother is going to sue them because she was paying for the wedding by herself, and we will see how this goes. Thank you so much. This really opened my eyes. I, uh, there was like, yeah. This cannot be the first time. This cannot be the first time this guy has done thrown a tantrum because he didn't get his way. I, I don't know that she's going to have a case to sue. I mean, weddings end up getting busted up all the time. I don't think, I don't that, think there's a way I don't to think you can that, sue. But, yeah, I don't think so either. But, you know, um, she wasn't even paying for the whole thing. Jocelyn, yeah. So so mother-in-law, who was paying for nothing, <laughs> says it's her day. <laughs> Here, and the fiance me. says it's her day too. Wow. Uh, Cancel wedding is cheaper than divorce. Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. Especially on your mental health. Yep. That sucks. Uh, yeah, no. So it was the question. The question was, am I the asking off for telling my mother-in-law she doesn't get to decide my wedding dress? You want to do the honors, Candy Thunder? NTA. Woo. All right. Bye, guys. Okay, here's the next story. Uh, this is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askonaut for telling my mother-in-law she needs to respect my boundaries? I, 30 female, have a really good relationship with my mother-in-law, 57 female. She has welcomed me into her family and is always there whenever I need her and up until recently considered her a friend. My husband travels a lot for work and mother-in-law often comes around to make sure I'm not lonely. While I appreciate the good intentions, sometimes she comes over unannounced at really inconvenient times, such as when I'm in the shower or having dinner or once even when I have been working without asking me first. I've not said anything up to this point, but has been overbearing and stressful at times. Recently, my mother was admitted to the hospital and was in for a few days when she passed away in the hospital of a heart attack, which was very sudden and unexpected as she had no other health conditions. Damn. My mother-in-law would often come to the hospital unannounced to show her support, despite my family not wanting visitors. That said, we were grateful someone was there if we needed anything. My husband was out of the country for work at the time my mother died and unable to support me, so I asked my mother-in-law to look after our dog while I moved back in to support my grieving father. Two days after my mother passed, I went back home to collect a few things that I needed, only to find my mother-in-law had been there and interfered with my entire house. As we discussed, she had taken our dog, but she had also rearranged my kitchen and living room, taken away my laundry to do at her home, and even went up to mine in my partner's room and rearranged our bed. She moved a lot of things around, some I still can't find, like jewelry, and changed all the bedding. I felt angry she had done this without asking my permission, as I felt violated she had been through my personal belongings, but the thing that upset me the most was that she took away every picture I had of my mother. What the f***? Why? What? Why? Uh, did she think she was helping? Did she? Did she think she was helping? I don't understand. Ugh. When I confronted her in tears, I begged her to return the pictures, and she said she was just trying to help. 
I said I could let the other things slide, but to return the pictures of my mother. She refused as she said I needed to heal and forget about her for a while to move on, which upset me more. That is not okay. This is like somebody telling you, yeah, just just shove those feelings deep, deep down and everything will be fine because clearly that works out well. Yeah, she refused. Cool. I told her she needed to respect my boundaries and wishes and bring everything back. And I told her from now on not to do anything without asking me first. She got upset and called my husband abroad, who told me I was an asshole for making his mom feel as if she had done something wrong. She did do something wrong, hubby. I feel really upset that mother-in-law did things without me asking her to. And while I am grieving, I don't believe I am in the wrong here. Am I the ask not? Hell no, you're not. There are a couple of potential reasons that she could be doing this kind of stuff, right? Like uh, until she refused to give your mother's pictures back, I was like, she has an idle hands issue and is like way too in her head and overthinking everything and trying to be helpful. But that's why she's got an idle hands issue. And she thinks her just showing up and doing this shit is actually being helpful. But when she refused to return the pictures of your mother, that's like, it's, it's a very clear violation. It's a clear violation. Rearranging all your shit, that feels like a control issue to me. Like how she thought she was being helpful in that, I do not understand. Unless it's an idle hands thing and she just convinced herself that that's the case. But refusing to return your mother's pictures because you need to heal and forget about her for a while is horseshit. She doesn't get to make that decision for you. She doesn't get to decide how your furniture is going to be arranged. She does not get to decide to change everything about your house. Hubby taking her side is a big problem. Now, obviously, who's his source? His source is his mother because she called him up and bitched about everything and cried to him. So I would try to set the sort the story straight first and be like, OK, well, yeah, you got your mom's version. Are you interested in hearing mine or are we just going to go off of her version of everything here? If he didn't ask for your version and just berated you for how how you wronged his mother, uh, he gets this. <laughs> OP is NTA. We already discussed that. Where would we put mother-in-law here? I'm going to talk about, uh, we do have to talk about uh, hubby as well here. We know he's a brozo, but he's something else too. I I mean, mother-in-law here, I, I think we, we, we teetered into malicious intent and not an idle hands thing. I don't believe she thinks she's being helpful. This is a control issue and why she thinks she can just take control over everything in your life and, and just change whatever the she wants without talking to you yeah she needs to respect your boundaries it was a huge overstep and then to not be like i was just trying to help of course i'll return the pictures but no i will not return them hello hello straight to ask on one for that straight to ask on one for that okay what about what about hubby here for choosing his mom obviously she had called and whined and cried to him so he that's the only story he's got in his head but for let's see what he did here Da, ba, da. She got upset and called my husband abroad, who told me I was an asshole for making his mom feel as if she had done something wrong. But she did something wrong. So for him saying that OP was an asshole for making his mom feel like she had done something wrong, where would you put her? Him. Him. Where would you put him? How we can go live with mummy? <laughs> Candy Thunder and Tony Sparker over here holding up the, the one in solidarity here. They are. They are. They're both living there. He, without even attempting to to understand what had actually happened, it's his mom. So he probably has a better idea than anyone what she's actually doing and how many boundaries she's crossing here. He knows that this is this goes beyond trying to be helpful. She arranged rearranged the entire house and refused to give the pictures of her recently passed mother back. How how can hubby look at this and be like, yeah, seems totally fine. Why are you making her feel like she did something wrong? All she did was rearrange the entire house without talking to you, change all the bedding and remove all the pictures of your uh, your mother who just passed from the house and refused to give them back. Why would you make her feel like she's doing something wrong? <laughs> Dumbass. It's not the done thing, mate. It's not the done thing. They're both there on Ascon 1 and their own little overstepping planet that's completely rearranged with new bedding and, and, and no pictures of... Of anyone who's passed, because it's best to just forget them. That's the healthy thing to do. Good gravy.
This story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askonaut for taking up all the attention at my sister-in-law's baby shower? I, 33 female, am an OBGYN and I've been traveling around different parts of the world on missions with MSF. Long story short, I haven't been home in 15 months. For some context, I decided to join due to a massive depressive episode after my ex-girlfriend broke up with me, but I ended up loving it and I just kept going on missions for 15 months. My ex-girlfriend is a good friend of my sister-in-law, Penny. I decided to take some time off and come back for a while before deciding on what's next for me. I returned two weeks ago. My brother, I'll call him Harry, 34 male, and his wife, Penny, 28 female, are expecting their first child. They had scheduled a baby shower for yesterday, and obviously, Penny invited me. Family members and some of Harry's old friends were asking me questions about different missions. Why I left for charity when I could earn a fortune here, whether it was hard being a woman in those, in those areas, etc. I gave them short answers, but they asked more questions. Penny subtly asked me to talk one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the party. She told me I was monopolizing everyone's attention and taking up everyone's time, and no one was paying attention to the purpose of this gathering due to my being there. I apologized and asked her if she wanted me to leave. She said I had been enough of a distraction and told me to please leave early. I left about half an hour after this talk. So far, everything's good. The next day, Harry called me and told me I had been a rude guest the day before because I had ruined their first child's baby shower. He said I should have kept quiet or at the very least left the party the moment Penny asked me to. Was I an asshole? I, 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 what were you supposed to do? This is this. This feels like a Kobayashi Maru for you, OP. There was no way to win if you, when people asked questions about what you had been doing, if people, if people asked you things and you just said, we'll talk about it later or didn't answer, you're an asshole for that. So by answering people's, people's just attention naturally perked and, and traveled your direction, you're an, you're an asshole for answering people's questions. I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, I get them wanting to focus the conversation, but but Penny could have focused the conversation without making it OP's fault. Completely could have made it, could have redirected it here and being like, okay, guys, let's focus on this. It doesn't have to be her fault because people are asking her questions about what she's been up to. That is not OP's fault. And she left half an hour early, didn't want to make it seem obvious or like they had been into a fight. So that's why she didn't leave right after they had the conversation. I understand the strategy behind that. Uh, Jess, yeah, you can't avoid being asked questions in that situation. Jocelyn says, I wonder if Penny tried redirecting and it didn't work. Ah, so she should be pissed at everybody then. I'm mad at all of you for asking the questions, and I'm mad at you especially for answering them. Dicks. It's, uh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're just too interesting. We're going to have to ask you to leave. Okay. So, sorry for being an interesting human being. It's my fault. My, my fault. That's ah, uh, and and yes, I mean, th think about the Harry, think about Harry's source here, right? <laughs> Harry is getting an earful from Penny, so of course, he's gonna call and be like, Yeah, that sucked, you shouldn't have done that. Uh, my life is hell right now. That's the part he's not saying. He's like, he's like, you're you're a dick. You shouldn't have done that. He's not saying my life is hell because of that. I don't really think that you were rude, but but it sure sounds like you were the way that Penny's telling it. His life is hell right now because of that. So yeah, you're the villain to him right now too. You caused him pain as well. You caused them both pain. Not because it was your fault, because that's just the way they want to place it. So whatever, you're too interesting. You should be sorry. You answered people's questions. How dare you? You showed up to the shower. So ballsy. Can't believe it. Can't believe you showed up and answered people's questions. That's ridiculous. Am I the astronaut for completely botching a wedding cake? I female 27 and trying to get my cake baking startup going. I was just getting a few orders here and there, so it gave me a lot of time to focus on adding quality and precision to each of the cakes I was working on. When things started to pick up the pace a little bit more, I started struggling a little bit with the rate at which I needed to be making cakes. Things got intense. 
I had a lot of orders, good for business, but I had to figure out a way to make those cakes quicker without sacrificing the quality. The busier I got, the more quality started to, well, gradually decline, but the cakes still got made decently. This most recent order is going to haunt me, though. I was stacked up on orders, and I had one for a plain white two-layer cake with frosted decorative edges and a little bride and groom centerpiece. Thankfully, that's a lot easier to make than a lot of the orders I get. But because I was expecting it to be easier, I didn't put much time and effort into it. So when it got close to the customer's pickup date, the cake was nowhere near ready. I botched it. I rushed it. I got nervous and panicked and rushed the process and the cake came out horribly. The responsible thing to do would have been to be honest and let the customer know and issue a refund and an apology. But I didn't. I boxed the cake and let them take it. Apparently, the cake was so bad that the middle caved in before they even made it to the event. I felt awful and got bombarded with bad reviews. I know I messed up, but it's one mess up out of hundreds of good cakes, and now my reputation is scorned forever. That doesn't seem fair. Am I the astronaut here? Truly. <laughs> so so here you go. Uh, Heather Heather says, yes, from a baker. Yes, you are. Uh, and also, YTA should have been honest, OP. Uh, YTA, I'm a baker, and don't take on more than you can handle, Brittany says. Sorry, OP, you messed up. Time to eat some crow. Small Town Angel says, yeah, you screwed up here. Unfortunately, you're going to learn this as a business owner now. Um, you're only going to hear from people who have a problem. No news is good news, right? If you don't hear anything back, that means you get did a good job. Um Getting people to, who have positive experiences to leave reviews takes work unless it's just an over the top an over the top experience. And then they might leave one if they have a bad experience at all. They will leave one. So you you are going to hear from people who have a bad experience 100 percent of the time you knew it wasn't up to par and you still sent it out anyway for somebody's for the most important day of their life to that point. You knew you up. And you did it anyway. So, yeah, you're an asshole for doing that. And, yeah, this is how it works. Negative experiences are always the loudest. Now, I highly advocate for this, especially, you know, with our with our marketing clients. I think when there is a negative experience like that, you don't try to have it removed. You don't don't respond uh, being irate or, or being rash. I think the way to handle this and to turn it into a positive is to respond but respond in a way that seeks to make it right. Respond in a way that makes somebody who is a prospective client looking at this review in the future uh, doesn't see a bunch of just negative negative reviews that are ignored, but sees a business owner trying to trying to solve the problem here. And and I don't know what that that response needs to say, but it needs to have an apology in there, and also needs to have some kind of recommendation for a solution path. It needs to have some kind of olive branch in there to make it or to show that you are willing to make it right. That goes a long way for somebody looking at a review, right? You do have the opportunity to turn a negative into a positive, not for them. They are never going to be your customer again, but for future potential customers looking at this negative review and seeing that you're actually trying to make it right, that goes a long way. It definitely does. Am I the astronaut for not inviting my friend to Disney because she cannot drive? I want to go to Disney, so I have planned to go down for a week. It's about a 10-hour drive, and it is already really expensive, so I decided the best option was to drive down instead of fly. I invited two of my friends to join me, so there would be three people in the car. The plan is to leave around 3 a.m., and we will get to the hotel in time to check in. Then spend the first day at Disney Springs. Due to it being a 10-hour drive, we are all going to drive three and a half hours, so everyone has time to rest and take a nap in the back. We all agreed that everyone needs to drive. I have a friend I have known for a long time, and I mentioned the trip. She asked who I was going with, and I told her. It was our mutual friend, and then someone she wasn't close to. She then asked why I didn't invite her. I gave a polite answer that this was just planned for us to get closer. She kept pushing and asked seriously why she wasn't invited. I told her since she could not drive. We were driving down, and we all agreed having someone not driving wouldn't work. The road trip needs people to pull their weight and not just sit in the car. She got offended, and I asked what did she expect when she asked about why she wasn't invited. This resulted in an argument, and she called me a jerk. The reason why she doesn't drive is because she's afraid of it. She hasn't renewed her license since she got in years ago. Since she got in years ago? I think there, maybe it was an accident or something. 
There's a reason. Edit. I have not been invited to stuff she does with people I know either. She went on a trip last fall with two people I knew and I wasn't invited. That's completely fine. I don't need to be invited to everything. Seriously, I don't have to invite everyone to everything. None of my other friends ask why they aren't invited. They told me to have fun. Okay, so the question on this first story is, am I the astronaut for not inviting my friend to Disney because she cannot drive? Uh, I mean, I, I understand the logic behind it. I think there was a different way to approach this. And uh, I mean, you just didn't want her there. It sounds like, and and if that's the case, just say, you know, you this, this wasn't for you. Now, you did give the reasoning that it was just for you three to get closer, and that's and that's fine. Um, you gave the answer. Also, so for the friend here, don't ask questions that you don't want to know the answer to, right? She pushed and pushed and pushed, and you finally said it's because you don't drive, and she's like, well, that's bullshit. Well, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. The flip side of that is, for you, OP, if you wanted to give this, this friend the opportunity to drive, or to not drive, but to go and not driving was the only reason that excluded her. Uh, how about you pitch instead of her driving? She pays an extra portion of gas money. She does something else to make up for not carrying her weight in the driving portion of it, but makes it up somewhere else. Right. I think there is a solution that could have been made there. It all comes down to you didn't invite her. You didn't include her in this. And that's fine. Not everybody gets invited to everything. Like you explained at the end, she has friends go to things that aren't that you aren't invited to. And you don't throw a fit about that either. So uh, but she kept pushing and pushing and pushing and she got uh, got an answer and it wasn't what she liked, but but it's the answer. I mean, she she could have come back here and said, instead of being pissy about it, uh, she could have come back here and said, well, how about instead of driving, I could pay for extra gas money or I could do this or I could do this. She didn't. She didn't do that either. She just wanted to be piss about it. Piss about it. Is that what I said? She just wanted to be pissed about it. So uh, she just wanted something that was ammo to to be hurt by. And that's not right either. Uh, she could have paid for gas, food, snacks, Amanda. Yeah, I agreed. However, um, <clears throat> She just she wasn't invited in the plan. She invited two of her friends to join her. OP did. So there'd be three people in the car. Um, I mean, is there an obligation to invite every friend that OP has? Does she have to invite everybody that she knows? And if that's the case, does this friend have to invite everybody she knows to everything she goes to as well? I don't think that's that's a reasonable expectation. Um, Mother Trucker says, I don't keep friends that get possessive and jealous of my other friends. Maybe that's it. Maybe it is a jealousy thing, but she does stuff without without OP. So where's the reciprocation here? Where's the line? Where is it? OK, I don't understand. Just because someone wants to invite themselves doesn't make the person who says no. The asshole agreed, Gina. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to now. Not inviting. So the question here is, am I the ask kind of for not inviting my friend to Disney because she cannot drive? No. I mean, there's different ways to go about it, but but you're not the asshole for not inviting them. I think what really it comes down to here is, are you the asshole for telling your friend that she wasn't invited because she can't drive after she pushed and pushed and pushed for an answer? That is a different scenario. She pushed. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. You tried to be nice about it and say that it was just for you three to get closer. And again, the friend here has things that you aren't invited to either, OP. So what's the big deal? If you wanted her there, you could have found a way for her to get there. And if she really wanted to go, she could have pitched an alternative, like I said, and, and found a solution here and said, I I could go if I do this X, Y, or Z. But she didn't want that. She just wanted to be mad about it. So NTA, NTA. Am I the astronaut for setting off my mother-in-law's solechophobia, fear of worms? And there's a trigger warning here that says dirt cake. Listen, li listen, y'all, listen. If somebody mistreats dirt cake, I'm just saying, I'm probably going to have some unreasonable amplified opinions here. Just saying. I, female 30, think I might have ruined my chances of forming a relationship with my mother-in-law. I'm currently engaged to my partner, male 32, and I'm trying to form a decent relationship with his mom. We didn't get off to a very good start. She doesn't exactly care for my style. It's too hippie-ish for her tastes. Apparently, her birthday is coming up, so I decided to help break the ice between us. I'd make her a cake. I would hardly say I'm a pro professional baker, but I do it as a hobby, and I think I'm pretty decent at it. When I asked my soon-to-be hubby what her favorite cake was, he told me, dirt cake. Well, yeah, because it's amazing. It's also not technically like a cake, but that was unfortunate for me because I had never made a dirt cake or anything like it. 
But I didn't want to seem stupid, and I didn't want to give him any doubts that I could make his mom's cake. So I took the challenge on and turned to Google. I found a super cute-looking recipe that was a dirt cake topped with gummy worms, and I thought it looked super creative, so I picked that one, trying to show some initiative. I was supposed to meet my husband at my mother-in-law's house for the party. He hadn't seen the cake, but I let him know it was a creative dirt cake, and that seemed to set well with him, so I got it out of the fridge and brought it to the party. When I showed up, mother-in-law greeted me and actually seemed really happy that I had made her a cake and was excited to see it. So I handed her the cake while taking my coat off and she opened the foil. The next thing I hear is glass shattering and a string of F-bombs. I whipped around concerned, thinking she had accidentally dropped it. I asked her if she was okay and to my surprise, she began pointing at me and cursing me out. I was so confused. My fiance came in and ushered his mother out of the room while father-in-law and brother-in-law were cleaning up the cake mess and everything began to make sense. Mother-in-law apparently has a very extreme phobia of worms. Even gummy worms set that off. It's called solechophobia. I felt so bad. She didn't speak to me for the rest of the party. Father-in-law went and bought a normal vanilla cake from Walmart. I think I messed up. But how could no one warn me about that? I feel like I should have been made aware. Either way, I feel awful. Am I the ass cannot for this? I, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have an irrational fear of being expected to be a mind reader. What? How were you supposed to know? Also, because there's gummy worms on top, does that make the, the entire dirt cake garbage? Couldn't you just remove the gummy worms? Save the dirt cake. Hashtag save the dirt cake. Let's start that. That needs to be a shirt. Save the dirt cake. Nurse Genesis, that was over the top. Hey, that's funny. It's the worms were on the top. Hey, hey, you can't be an asshole if you never knew. Uh, Vicaris. Yeah, I would agree. It was an honest mistake. Megan Hart. Um, the fact that mother-in-law got all accusatory here, like you intentionally set off her selecty phobia, uh, is bullshit. That's garbage. The 180. I mean, obviously, if she has an extreme fear of something and this triggered it, then she has an irrational response, right? It's it's that wasn't really her right then. That was completely being driven by fear. Um, now, now. Father-in-law went and bought a normal vanilla cake from Walmart. I mean, take the worms off. But because what gummy worms touched it, she's now deathly afraid to eat it like there's real worms inside of it or something. It's, it's. I mean, fears are irrational, and I get it. Um, but there's no way that you could have known about this. I, I don't think she really meant... I really, I don't think that she meant what she was saying. It was just the fear taking the wheel there. Mad Hatter, thanks for the super over there. Says OP's boyfriend is asking one for not giving info to OP about it. I would agree with that Um, for saying her favorite cake is dirt cake, which in its full form does come with gummy worms on top. Would you agree with that? Candy Thunder, a full traditional dirt cake does come with gummy worms on top. Well, she says not in my family. Okay. So if somebody said to you, um, my favorite cake is a dirt cake and you were going to like look up a recipe and make one, would you automatically put gummy worms on it or not? If I didn't know what dirt cake was and it was on the recipe, then I mean, I think it's so hard because I don't do dirt cake. We don't do traditional dirt cake. We do like vanilla pudding with cream cheese and butter. It's a completely different cake. So yeah, you're asking me to disregard my soul. Yeah. Of dirt cake. <laughs> disregard everything, you know. Uh, we yeah. do not put worms in our or worms. In our, I don't know. This is hard for me to, to imagine. Let's let's do this. So if I do a dirt cake recipe, Google search, the first ones that come up, the majority of them have gummy worms on it. So give OP some grace for that. Right. I think if you if you really dug into it, you would probably find that it's like a 50 50 kind of thing. And a lot of times gummy worms are more for like if, if kids are going to eat it, it has gummy worms on it. If it's an adult thing, typically doesn't. But. But if you're brand new to dirt cake and you just Google recipes and they all have gummy worms on it, then you'd put gummy worms on it. Like that's a dirt cake. This is what it says a dirt cake is. I don't want to screw this up for mother-in-law. So I did what this dirt cake said it was. There's no way that you could have known that she, that she had this phobia, but to give hubby, is it hubby? That is right. Right. Yeah. To give hubby some grace here as well, like candy thunder, if his understanding of dirt cake is seeded by how they always did it and it never included gummy worms. If, if I said I was going to make a a dirt cake for, for Peggy, would you automatically be like, Oh, but don't put gummy worms on it. Candy thunder. Would you think to say, don't put gummy worms on it because there's never been gummy worms on it for your family. No. 
There we go. So I think I think we have to give Hubby some grace there as well, because if it never included gummy worms in his experience, then he wouldn't think to say, oh, but crap, don't put gummy worms on it. So I mean, there's there's context going on all over the place here. Um, Joyful Stranger, maybe he didn't know that worms go on a dirt cake mo- and because mom hated it. That's what I'm saying. Maybe the context there means it was unintentional by all parties. Um, I I th- I want to lean to this is just an honest mistake all around. I don't think anybody was malicious on this. Mother-in-law's reaction was over the top, but it's because it triggered a phobia, right? So uh, so I, I think it's honestly like a nobody sucks here. Her reaction was over the top, and I understand why you feel bad about it. I don't I, I want to give I want to give hubby a little bit of grace here. I want to give OP some grace here. Mother-in-law, because it triggered a phobia, I'm giving her some grace as well. Maybe it's because it's we're 12 hours and 45 minutes into this thing and I'm getting soft. I don't know. Uh, but but I don't think anybody sucks here. It's an NTA all around for me. See and son, local bakery has dirt cupcakes and they have worms. I know it's uh it is a when I did a, just a random Google search, and that was kind of the best barometer for me. It everything almost everything, all but one had gummy worms on it. So This one is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Asconaut for Starting Arguments by Insisting on Talking Through Disagreements with My Husband? This is a long-standing issue between my husband, 36 male, and myself, 41 female. My husband has always had an issue with communication. When we were first dating, it was to the point where there were long pauses before each sentence because he had to put so much thought into what he was going to say. I, on the other hand, am really big on open, honest communication within relationships, be it significant other, familial, or just friendships, but maintain that the honesty must come out in a way that isn't intentionally hurtful. Like all marriages, my husband and I disagree at times. While I would like to talk about this disagreement in a calm manner, he would rather ignore the issue. If I try to push the issue, his words, by coming to him to try to talk, it always turns into him ignoring, yelling, belittling, blowing off, etc. It doesn't matter if I try to talk to him immediately or days later, it always happens. It has even happened recently when there were a lot of things bothering me. Some things involved him, some not, but I just kept it to myself because I didn't want to deal with his reactions to my issues. He asked me to talk, but I refused until the next day when he brought up my refusal to talk and laid everything out. I was frustrated, but didn't yell or cuss or belittle or anything. Just kind of word vomited everything that was bothering me. It went exactly as predicted. Now we have a 13-year-old son. Overall, a very good young man, but he's 13. Typical teenager problems pop up. Tonight was the argument about going to bed. Tomorrow he doesn't have school, so he got to stay up late. It was 11.30 p.m. and I told him to shower and go to bed. An argument ensued about how his friends don't have a bedtime and he should be able to pick his bedtime and blah, 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 blah. I wasn't getting loud. I have PTSD. I hate loud. Loud is a big trigger for me. But I was being stern. My husband decided to butt in, yelling at him to go shower and go to bed. My stance on parenting is you don't interfere with what the other is doing unless the situation is out of control or the child is being put at risk. If you have an issue, you take it up with the other parent away from the child after the situation is dealt with. Intervening undermines the other parent's authority and will cause issues with the child. I tried to bring up this issue with my husband. Again, he refused to talk it through. I pushed. Argument ensued. He finally said to post it here to see who is right, both about the communication issue and the parenting issue. So Reddit... Who is the asshole? There's an edit to add here explaining my word vomit. I laid out everything that was on my mind and not just about him. Issues included problems with my oldest son, 22 male, dealing with a vehicle claim, the state of the house, issues with the VA, everyone getting COVID, my mom living with us in the fear for her health, husband had it, gave it to me two weeks later, and our youngest son had it. Stressing about finances due to more unexpected expenses than planned for, my son's dog got sick and required emergency vet care and then special at-home care. And then his own lack of personal care for his own health and well-being and the effects it has on the family. I'm sure there was more, but he hyper-focused on my issues with our oldest son and started berating me about it. Completely ignored everything else aside from slightly touching on his own personal health and how it's no big deal. I was not just ranting at him and everything he did wrong. Most of what I was going on about had nothing to do with him, but I needed support and didn't get it. And uh, There's a lot to unpack in this story, but ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder. Oh my God, it's Candy Thunder. You know, I I feel like, and I think we talked about this yesterday, but uh, like learn how to fight um, productively. productively. Yeah. And I think that there, 
she married him and and knew that he wasn't great at communication. But also, I think something that that works for us is like, do you want um, like do you want feedback from me? Do you want to help find a solution, or do you just need to mm. vent about what's going on? And maybe. I mean, I don't know. I can't imagine not having a partner that I can't talk things through with, even if it's a disagreement, even if it's something that's going to be a hard conversation. I can't imagine not being able to talk to somebody about that. I I agree with you. And I mean, I think there's a couple of sides to this, though. Um, I have found it extremely helpful on my end because I'm immediately solution seeking. Anytime I start hearing about a problem, I'm like, okay, how do how do we address this? But if you give me the disclaimer up front and you're like, yeah. I'm not looking for a solution, I'm looking <laughs> to vent, then I know. Then I know I'm like, okay, listen. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that if you want your marriage to survive, then you guys, you both need therapy because this is this is not something that can withstand much longer. If you're so, you're, you are very frustrated with your husband and not being able to open up about things that are bothering you. If they talk about having a 22-year-old son here. And a 13 year old. Yeah. So they've 20, been married a lot. But 22, husband is 36. And so I would assume uh, OP's okay. 41. Maybe the son, the first, the 22 year old is hers. At the time. Um, so yeah, who knows? But also, there's like, there's this line where if you put too much on your partner, it can make them shut down. So I think maybe ask yourself how, how much are you venting? And how much of it really needs to be vented to your husband. There's things that I know I can talk to him about, but there's also things that, that are triggers for him that will automatically like shift him to asshole or defensive mode. And I'm like, I'm not going to talk about those things what? with you. So it's like I, I figure out different solutions on my own or talking to other people about those things. Um, because I know that that's something that you're not, not that you're not interested, but it's just, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Regardless of if it's venting or solution seeking, there are some things that are going to consume my mind. Correct. There you go. Uh, and, uh, and drama will... is one of those things. He <sighs> hates drama. And so if there's stuff, like depending on the severity of what's going on. Drama, trauma. I would try, I would minimize whatever I'm trying to tell him into a very conce- concise and clear statement so that it's not telling him too much. So I think um, I think that she needs to look at how much she is venting to her husband or how much she wants to have these conversations, because if it's constantly happening, then maybe he has a little bit of the trauma drama. Maybe it's too much. Drama, and trauma. So I think drama, whatever. Trauma, trauma, drama, 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 that drama too. whatever. That um, too. I think that he may have a little bit of that with her. Um, but again, counts, like therapy would help because you have to be able to talk to your partner. You yeah. have to. And if he shuts down immediately, then there is no communication. She has no outlet. She has no, I, I can't imagine you shutting down every time I try to speak to you. That would just, that would be really incredibly difficult. It would be tough. And and also the whole approach of just shoving shoving issues deep down and right. pretending they don't exist. That's not a solution. And that's I, not healthy. But you, I mean, I would guess that's how he was raised. You don't I, talk yeah, about it. You for just, sure put it away and it is what it is and which is why his emotions come out with ignoring yelling belittling blowing out like those things those come out because he doesn't know how to handle his emotions so it's him trying to cope with something he doesn't yeah. know how if you to push process. everything down it is going to come out at some point you can but only it comes push out stuff down as so vomit far. when you push it all down like it's it comes out with no control over anything that's not a solution so yeah therapy to learn how to how to mm-hmm. how to communicate productively uh, yeah. is definitely needed if if he's willing to do that because that that's confronting issues not just ignoring them so they don't go away dusty obviously. doesn't just about walk on water <laughs> no we both have our own baggage we have plenty we of have shit. Our, we both have our own bs oh show he's 36 and obviously still immature but you, you gotta learn you gotta learn to get past that at some point here and they've got yeah. you know they've got kids that are that are older along so at some point yeah. There's got to be there's got to be a decision to improve those skills. And it it was an intentional decision for us. I mean, for me, yeah. I had to I had to I had to become a lot more self-aware and do intentional work. And I think if you are willing, if you are always focused on doing better in your relationship, you're only going to go in the right direction. He's got this like ignore it and it'll go away. It's just it, not healthy. It's not. And I, I don't know how you made it this far. I, I don't know how. I mean, you guys have a 13 year old together, so you've been together for quite a while. This would be soul crushing to me. I could not withstand this like this. I would have been in counseling a lot, a lot sooner or this marriage would have already fallen apart because I think not being able to express yourself without the fear of being belittled or yelled at, that would just, that would suck. 
That would suck very yeah. badly. And I, I do, I feel for you because, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel, I do feel bad for OP. So is she the astronaut for starting arguments by insisting on talking through disagreements with her husband? I, I don't think so, but maybe you're an asshole to yourself because you know what this is going to bring to your life. It's like, what do you keep touching the hot stove? Yep. Like you keep touching the hot stove every time when you know that this argument is not going to go anywhere, but frustration for you. I think the best thing, you're an asshole to yourself. So fix it, get counseling or, or leave the marriage. I don't, and I hate saying divorce because, but if you can't express yourself to the one person that's supposed to always be in your corner without fear of being made to feel bad for expressing yourself, then I think you, that's not a marriage. Right. Uh, the, the, the counseling part of this is mandatory. I would say if you yeah. have any chance of surviving the yeah. counseling part of this is ma mandatory because you have to have to, have to, have to be able to communicate effectively. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's it, even worse to have a partner who's not a partner. If I, here, it's just having another kid. You know what? At that come, point. come to the Dusty Thunder page, be a part of our fam, and you can vent. Bring it.